Okay, what you're gonna do, step into each one of those. Bring this up. So your arm will go through here. Flip these together. So you don't go down the wind tunnel. You ready? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, let's go. That's 30 miles an hour. It's gonna start to get a little uncomfortable in there. This is 40 miles an hour. I think this would be the speed where I would not be able to stand on my own two feet without this harness. Where, where are we at, Chris? 45 miles an hour. Yeah, I can't stand on my own. It's difficult to breathe. It's 70 miles an hour. It's really freezing. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I need to pop my ears. How does my hair look? You did very well. <laughs> Actually, it was all stuck right to the top. <laughs> was, yeah. How'd I do? You did great. Oh, You're 75 goodness. miles an hour. When we're talking about wind gusts of sure. 70, 80 miles per hour, like that's what we're, that would knock you off your feet for right. sure. Right, yep. Just like your body, there's a threshold for what buildings can withstand too. Dr. Seymour Spence teaches and studies the effects of high winds on infrastructure at the University of Michigan. Poles can start to get damaged at around 60 miles an hour. So anything above that is when we're expecting something bad could start to occur. This was the wind damage just last week in Beverly Hills, downing trees and power lines. And this past April, 65 mile per hour winds ripped roofs off of buildings in Ferndale. Ultimately, buildings will have direct wind damage due to pressures. The pressure can then build up enough to actually create a loss of a roof panel, a siding panel, then you can start to get internal pressurization, which can lead progressively to the entire loss, for example, of a roof on a, on a building. Are there any tips for people residentially to depressurize their home before a big severe weather event rolls through? Absolutely. The important thing is keep all your doors and windows and garages closed. You do not want any air coming into your building. What's going to happen is if you have an open door or a window that's open, air gets in, Pressure builds up inside your building, and then you start to get positive pressures trying to actually rip components off your building. So when you see storms on radar, they may start in a scattered nature, fueled by moisture in the environment. Now, sometimes those storms become linear, and when they do, they're likely severe. The backside winds can become stronger than the winds ahead of the storms, forcing the line to bow out. Meteorologists refer to this as a bow echo on radar, which indicates the area of strongest wind. So let's translate what you see on radar compared to what you see at the surface. Located near a base of a thunderstorm is a shelf cloud. These are wedge shaped and typically associated with severe winds. This warmer and more humid air gets pushed above the cooler air, helping to develop the tall, ominous clouds that are associated with thunderstorms. Damaging winds occur when the storms are able to pull fast winds in the atmosphere down to the surface through a downdraft. About 90% of our convective warnings issued in Southeast Michigan have historically been for severe thunderstorms concerning damaging winds and or large hail as opposed to tornadoes. So the next time you brush off a severe thunderstorm warning, remember what 70 mile per hour winds look like. How are you still smiling? I think it's just like plastered. <laughs> you know, you those winds. Totally, yeah. totally. I love that your first question when you came out, How's which would have been mine too. <laughs> How's my hair? It was like the Beyonce effect, like <laughs> yeah. amplified. Yeah, just, amplified, yeah. amplified. That's right. As somebody who has covered hurricanes in Florida, yeah. um, you should be thankful there was no debris. In oh, the, in absolutely. Because yeah. that's the real issue. Right, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, and, and what was really eye opening to me was that, you know, our severe thunderstorm threshold is 58 mile per hour winds or greater. And so, to knock me off my feet, we were talking 40, 45 miles per hour. So, that's not even considered a severe storm, mm -hmm. you know, not even talking hurricanes, mm -hmm. right. nonetheless. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, that was really eye opening. The other part of our story that we um, tagged on the, uh, the next day was that trees when you start to cut them back so think of like DTE coming back because or coming out to cut some trees by power lines or you have a dead tree in your yard and you want to cut that down for safety purposes now you're changing the landscape of the trees that are behind oh. this and so these trees that have been covered by surrounding trees are growing taller to capture sunlight and they don't have as much of a root base as some of the ones around them so then they're no longer protected and then that high wind load and storms can knock them over because this is an environment right. that they're not used to mm -hmm. interesting right. 
right. So you could be causing more harm than good when you start to trim trees in your yard. Mm -hmm. So I guess like really the takeaway is if you are cutting back trees, just make sure there's enough clearance between that tree line and your home because you're going to put them in a different environment. Hmm. One question, I thought that the taller the tree, the deeper the roots. Not necessarily, mm -hmm. no. Especially with silver maple, which is very common, and that's when we go oh. out to these neighborhoods, those are the ones that have Toppled tipped over. over. Yeah, and then the other thing to take into account are when you have a lot of rain and yeah. the ground is soft, think about if you're going to pluck weeds in your yard, it's easier to do that after a rain. Right. Mm -hmm. Same with trees, if a like strong wind gust comes and the ground is really saturated, then they're more susceptible mm -hmm. to falling over. Okay. And we have really susceptible ground right now because of the rain. Yeah. Luckily, no Thankfully, rain. it's just cool temperatures today. Right. Yeah, today. a little breezy, but not overly gusty. <laughs> yeah, it's cool temperatures. So yeah, well, at least we're going to be in a couple days of